Have you ever began a race and realized your fan wasn't on? Split-second decisions arise and panic sets in. Should I ride without it or jump off and hope to get back on the bike in time? Well, I've asked myself, what's the true impact of not having a fan in this scenario and have set out to quantify the fact of riding with and without a fan. But before we get into the test, a bit of science on why riding without a fan may affect performance. The optimal temperature to ride in ranges between 50 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit. While most Swifters ride in this temperature range, some only have a fan, while others have AC units, so the largest variance is an air movement. As your body registers an increase in body temperature, it begins producing sweat. In order to cool most effectively, this sweat needs to evaporate. This process is called heat evaporization. It takes energy to evaporate sweat off your skin, and that energy is heat. Riding indoors without any airflow, the sweat drips onto the floor instead of evaporating, and in turn is ineffective in cooling your body. In addition, your body will form a layer of heated air as you increase your efforts, and airflow can assist in dissipating this layer of warmth. For this reason, some air movement is critical to your performance. Our aim is to test how much performance suffers from lack of air movement. I've isolated that variable by the following for each test. First, we are riding the Roca Corvo, a climb of 11.8 kilometers, averaging a 6.4% gradient. Second, we have access to the same hydration. In this case, three bottles with tap water. Third, we are utilizing full cycling kit. And finally, we are utilizing the Garmin bike computer to measure temperature. I have rode under two scenarios, scenario A and scenario B. I rode with an AC unit and two fans. For B, I've eliminated each. My assumption is I may be 5% slower, but there's only one way to find out. So let's ride. Let's do it. And we're just starting off on this long journey. My plan is to start off around 320 to 330 watts. Ooh, checkpoint number two. Still feeling pretty strong. Feel pretty cool. As cool as you can be. Being in the middle of a 800 meter climb. Through checkpoint two, I'm still able to have a casual chat while riding. Just approaching the halfway point, my watts still look pretty consistent. While I'm definitely feeling the 200 plus meters of climbing thus far, my body language is still looking good. Ah, and look at the pain on my face now. Pushing through this pain, the watts are staying high. I have crossed the checkpoint with a 322 watt section average, matching the first sections. This next bit will provide insight into how I'm feeling. Just watch. The road kicks and I'm out of my saddle, powering through it. It's hurting, but my body has coped well to this point as I still have that energy push the pace. Here we are, less than 60 meters to go. My heart rate is near the max of the day and I'm gonna finish strong. Once I cross the banner, I will provide my post-ride takeaway. Whew. Number one done. Felt pretty tough the last half, especially some of those kicks. Really a little bit uneven. You could just hear it in my voice. I was able to have a conversation after this test. I felt like I was pushing hard and was happy with my time. Although I set out hard, with checkpoint three having my highest average watts, I was able to keep the watts high throughout. That shows that my body felt fine riding with the parameters of test one. Let's drop into test two and see if my body can respond the same way. All right, here we go. In these first few sections, I will provide live audio to give insight into how I felt during the ride. One more banner down. Still feeling okay. I can definitely feel a difference though. So. Let's skip ahead to the same bit from test one. We got this still. I am still able to chat, but my body is really feeling the heat. Notably, my average watts by section are decreasing. I'm starting to feel miserable. And this is the point my body is beginning to fight me. Approaching checkpoint six, and wow, just look at how much agony I seem to be in. Just looking down, doing anything I can to distract my mind. Legs are starting to go. If you've ever cracked before, you know how I am feeling now. Ah, completely gone. You can just hear it in my voice. 
It's a chore, just trying to speak, and the power has dropped off a cliff. Two more. Bonnie's just screaming. Get cooled down. Luckily, the end is just ahead, as I had contemplated if I would be able to make it to the finish line. And I have just under 60 meters to go. Compared to the last few kilometers, I'm putting in a big injection of tempo. Mustering anything above 220 watts has become so difficult. And the misery is finished. I need to sit down for a minute. Oh, and that was definitely one of the more miserable rides I've done. We just needed to take five minutes just to lay down and recover. The other day when I did it with the AC, then felt like I still had stuff in the legs at that. Today, I just noticed my heart rate, even when I tried to back down the watts a little bit, never seemed to recover. That truly was one of the most miserable times I've had on a bike. Through the first few checkpoints, I felt I was pretty strong compared to my first test. In fact, the watts were still relatively close. However, anytime the road kicked, it felt like it was so hard to breathe in oxygen. I could almost feel every kick in the road, just slowly sapping my energy. And eventually, near the second to last checkpoint, my body cracked. It was as if my body was screaming to me, saying, get me out of this hot room. But let's check the data and see what it says about the difference in results. First up is test one with the fans and AC going. The average heart rate was 171, which is at the low end of my zone four. For my max heart rate, I was at 181 beats. Average power was 322. Average temperature, 70.2 degrees Fahrenheit. And I gotta say, it felt quite comfortable for this ride. Max temperature was a bit higher at 72.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And my climb time was 36 minutes and 29 seconds. Quite a solid ride. Now for the data we've all been waiting for. Test two with no AC and no fans. First up, my average heart rate. It was 171, about the same as test one. Max heart rate was 180, once again, about the same. Average power, however, was 276. And wow, that's almost a 17% decrease. Average temperature was 76.1 degrees, only 8% warmer. But I gotta say, the environment felt much worse. And the max temperature was 77.2 degrees Fahrenheit. And the big one, my time. It was 41 minutes and 45 seconds, or 14% slower. But was this test a fluke? I know what you may be thinking. Well, the ride without fans was the day after with tired legs. Well, that is true, but I ruled out this variable by riding under the setup of test one after three tough days on this climb. And my time, well, it was fairly the same as test one. So what was causing such a drastic difference in performance? My original assumption was that I may be 5% slower, but I was surprisingly 17% slower. Well, I reckon it is due primarily to the lack of air movement. We saw the temperature was only a few degrees higher, and it was still within the optimal riding temperature. However, it felt much warmer than the temperature showed. It almost became a sauna with no air movement. Every time I tried to up the watts, it felt as if I had to actively think about breathing. Every time I completed this action, my energy reserves drained significantly until the point my body had enough. Once I got over exhausted and my heart rate up, I couldn't get it under control because my body's primary focus was to cool down. And all of this compounded into a bad time. So remember, always check your fans before riding.